Hey guys, welcome back to the Elixir Phoenix 1.3 tutorial. Today we're going to be adding some CRUD to our GraphQL endpoint. In GraphQL, there are only two types of operations. There are queries and mutations. A mutation is an operation that mutates the underlying data system. Mutations are how we create, read, update, or delete data. And you can also use mutation for something like login authentication and sending tokens back and forth from the server. First, let's take a look at our post chain set. So as you can see, our post chain set requires that we pass it three arguments, title, body, and user ID. As a result, we need to create a mutation that requires these three arguments. If we open up our schema.ex file, we can actually create this mutation. Like with our query before, we can preface this with mutation. And for this mutation, our field will be called create post. And of course, it will create a post, so type post. We want to input three arguments in here, and they all have to be non-null because our change set requires all three of them. So we put our title, body, and user ID with title and body being string and the user ID being an int. And like with our query fields, we have to add a resolve and point it towards the function that will allow us to do this mutation. So this function we haven't created yet, which is our post resolver create function, but we will do that here in a moment. Now this implementation is a little bit simplistic and it could get a little bit messy if we have multiple mutations back to back, but we'll be cleaning this up later down the line when we start to add a few more features to our application. This time inside of our post resolver module, when creating our create function, we have to to actually use the arguments that we're passing through. And it's actually a fairly simple function because all we need to do is call our post context and then the create post function. In Phoenix 1.2, we would have to actually build out this function manually by creating a post map like this and then calling the post chain set and then inserting it in the repository. But because of Phoenix 1.3's context system, we've already got this functionality built for us, so we should just take advantage of it. Oh, by the way, guys, make sure to spell out integer rather than just writing int. That was a mistake I just made. Now we can spin up the server to actually deploy our GraphQL endpoint. We can create our post by calling mutation create post and then opening some brackets and then typing in create underscore post, the title, the body, and then the user ID. And in this case, I'm just passing back the ID. So if I hit the play button, it will pass back ID of 11. And then if we query all of our posts again, it should now show us our new posts at the bottom here. For now, we're just going to skip over the R in CRUD because we've already implemented reading. Let's look at updating. Before we implement our update functionality, we need to talk about our GraphQL mutation arguments and one of the few types of data that we can use. One of these types is called an input object. This is similar to other GraphQL objects that we've made previously, but it represents an object of data that is passed to a mutation as an argument. We're going to create one which will be called update post params, and this will be for updating our post, and then we will define an update post mutation. So here's our input object. You can see it's called update post params, and then we have three fields inside of it, one for each of our fields, title, body, and user ID, and these are also non-null like with our mutation. Inside of our mutation block, we can create a new field called update post, and then we put our type post, and inside of it we put in an argument for ID, and then we put an argument for the post itself and we reference our update post params input object. Then we want it to resolve to graphical post resolver update. So let's create that function. This function is going to be slightly a little bit more complicated than the other ones that we've created thus far. We need to deconstruct our arguments into a map with two fields, one being our ID and the other one being our post params. And for our update function, we want to call post.getPost, and we pass in the ID here to get the post that we want to change. And then we pipe in the result of that into post update post with our post params. If we go back to our GraphQL UI, we can actually make our mutation. So we just call mutation update post, and then we call update underscore post. We put in the ID of the post that we want to update. In this case, we want to update our post number 11. And then we put in our post, and this will be an entirely new object. And inside of it, we need our title, our body, and our user ID. I'm going to make it so that it will return the entire post. So it'll return the ID the title and the body. And here we can see that we get our updated post and it returns our title, which was updated, our ID and our body. All right, so now we have read, we have create and we have update. Let's add delete. And for this delete post mutation, all we need to do is put it inside of our mutation block and we need an argument for the ID of the post that we want to delete. And we also need that to be non-null. 
and then we're going to point it at our graphical post resolver delete function. For our delete function, we're going to again deconstruct our args into a map with just ID inside of it. So similar to how we created our update function, we want to call get posts on ID. This will pull the post out of our database and then we pipe the post into our delete post function, which will delete the post. I know this seems like a fairly strange way of doing things, but if you look at the way that the delete post function was created, it has nothing that references the post's ID. And because we want to delete it by its ID, this is the easiest way to do so. For this mutation, we can just write mutation, delete post, and then call delete underscore post with the ID that we want to delete. And then we'll have it pass back the ID. And if we hit play, you'll see that it deleted post ID. We can query our posts again. You'll see that now we're missing the posts that we had created, updated, and now deleted. Now that we have full CRUD implemented for our posts, we want to start to think about adding user authentication. So first we want to bring in three dependencies. One is called come on in. This will allow us to hash our passwords. Then we have bcrypt elixir, which is a helper for come on in. And then we have guardian, which allows us to deploy JWT tokens. bcrypt elixir is going to require a C compiler. So I've used a special command to open up this command prompt. I'll put the command in the description box below for anybody on Windows. If you're on Linux or if you're on Mac and you have GCC, make sure that it's in your path when you compile your dependencies. So all you really need to do is run mix, do, deps, get, comma, compile, and this will get and compile your dependencies. After that's done, you can just close out of this uh, command prompt because you won't need it anymore. So then we want to configure guardian and we do this by saying config graphical guardian and this is a module that we created and I'll show you what I created. And then we put in an issuer field which is our application name and then a secret key field which is a secret key. You can generate a guardian secret key by typing in mix guardian.gen.secret and this will give you your secret key. Our guardian graphical module will look like this. So we just say use guardian OTP app and then we point it to our application. And then we want to alias our graphical.accounts so that we can get access to our user. And so these two functions will just allow us to basically look up our resources when given a token. Now that we have Guardian and Come On In set up, we want to create a new migration for our database. And I'm just going to call this add password hash, but you can call it whatever you want. And it's just mix ecto.gen.migration and then add password hash. And this will create a new migration file for us. And you'll see here that it has an empty change function that we can fill in with the new alterations that we want. All we really want to do inside of this file is alter our table users and add the field called password hash, which is a string. And we can run this again by just running mix ecto.migrate. Then we want to go inside of our user file and we want to add to our schema. And we've added a new password field, which is virtual. That means that it won't be saved in our database. And then we have another field called password hash, which is a string. And this will be saved into our database. I'm then going to make two new change sets. One of them is called update change set and the other one's called registration change set. Update change set will take our user, cast it, and it will also cast the password, but it won't require our password to validate. And then if we do have a password, it will try to put and get the password hash. And then the registration chain set will actually try to validate our password from the start. Our put pass hash function just takes in the chain set and then it matches on the chain set. And if we have an ecto chain set with a valid map and the changes are to our password, then we put our changes with our change set and our password hash and we call come on in bcrypt hash password salt on our password and we store it in our password hash. Otherwise we just pass back the change set. And this will essentially allow us to hash the passwords and then put them in the database. Next we want to create an input object inside of our schema to allow us to update our user params. This will have a name field an email field and a password field. Then we want to add a field for updating our user into our mutation block. And like with our update post block, we're just going to call ID, which will be non-null, and then user, which will reference our update user input object. And then we'll resolve to our graphical.userResolver update. Now the update function is probably the easiest one to make because we want to make it so that we do not have to be registered to update our users right now. And the reason why is because neither of our users have passwords current. Now we could inject the passwords using our seeds, but it's probably easier for us to just inject them inside through GraphQL. And because this isn't a full production ready application, it's not really a problem to do things this way. 
This function will be virtually identical to our post update function, except we're using graphical.accounts context rather than the graphical.posts context. So we get the ID out of our database and then we update the user with our user params. And this function is actually using our normal change set, so we want to fix that. If we come down here to our update user function, we can come to this part where it says user and we can change this from change set to update change set. And this will now use our update change set. So this is one of the nicer things about having a context. It's just a matter of changing one or two lines rather than rewriting the same code over and over and over again. Now we can update our user by calling mutation update user update underscore user. We put in the ID of the user that we want to update and then the user and the object for our user with the name, email, and password. In this case, I'm updating John Doe to Jake Doe and then his email will be test at example.com and the password will be random. And this will pass back the ID afterwards. And you'll see here that we get back update user with the ID. And if we query our user ID one, then we get the name and the email back. All right, guys, well, that's it for now. We will finish up our GraphQL endpoint in the next video because the next few parts are a little bit more complicated and I'd like to have a little bit more time to talk about them. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you disliked it, and downvote it as much as you'd like. Have a good night, guys.